Good evening. Good evening, everybody. How's it going out there? My name is Vincent Kelly, and I am your host, as they say. I'm the guy delivering the lecture tonight. I genuinely appreciate you giving me your time tonight, and I'm going to make it worth your while. I want to say hello to everybody on all the platforms. Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, hello everybody out there. I can't see you directly in front of me, but I've got somebody keeping an eye on those channels. So if you've any comments or questions throughout this webinar, you can pop them into the comment section and they will come straight around to me. And for everybody on Zoom, I've got you all here open in front of me. So thank you so much for joining me. I'll say hello to you individually. Uh, I'm there as well as a guest, so I, so I can see the chat. Hello, Paul, Selma, Orla, Joanne, Beth, Hendrix. Giselle, Satmari, Carmel, Rapansky, Maria, and uh, Ulia. Uh, great to have you folks on board. And uh, thank you so much for being here. First things first, uh, anybody who's been to my webinar before, you will know what my first question is going to be. Volunteers, not yet. Put in the chat, if you don't mind, where you're logging in from. I like to see where everybody is in the world, whether you're from Ireland or are you in Dublin or are you in Cork? Are you over in the UK, you know, in Wales? Are you in America? Where are you? That's what I want to know. Where are you? Okay. And it'll also give you a little bit of practice because when I'm on the webinar tonight, I will throw out a few questions at you and I'll ask you to pop an answer into the, into the chat box thing. You don't have to, don't worry. If you don't want to participate, you don't have to. Don't worry at all, but it kind of gives you some exercise. So if you don't mind, pop it into the chat where you're logging in from. That would be amazing. Oh, great. Okay, now I've got to keep up. All right. Um, oh, hello, David. You put on the camera. Anybody? You can follow David's lead. So if you're free and you don't mind being on camera, then stick it on. I love to see people's faces as well. You don't have to, but if you like, that's great. And thank you, David. Okay. Beth, thank you very much for calling me a legend. Okay, Joanne, Canada. Hi, Joanne. Carmel. Oh, there's Giselle. Thank you, Giselle. Fair play to you. Fair play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we've got Giselle in Dublin. That's wonderful. Beth's in Yorkshire. Hiya, Beth. Hendrix is in Perth, Australia. Lovely. Lovely. I, go, I was going to try there for a second an Australian accent, but I won't. Uh, Orla from Kildare. Orla. Oh. I'm from Kildare too. I'm from between a Thai and Castle Dermot in Kildare. Um, Rapan Maria, I don't know if it's Rapanski Maria, I guess it's Maria Rapanski from Hungary. Maria, I know two words, Hodvoj, which is how are you? I think that's Hungarian anyway. And Kirai, which is cool. Okay, and Ulia from Denmark. Good stuff, Maria. And Rapanski, I don't know which is the name first. And um, great that you've logged in from Denmark. I'd like to go visit Denmark someday. It looks nice in the pictures. Right, folks, thanks a million. Uh, throughout this webinar, right, I want to keep it a bit interactive so that you get something out of it. I don't want it to be just me blabbing on at you with some, well, oh, here's this, that, and the other. Read out 14 pages of a book and see you later. I want to just give you some key points on this webinar and uh, so that at the end of this, you can put it into practice, okay? Now, for anybody who stays until the end of the webinar, I have a special offer for you. So I'd encourage you all to stay till the end. And I promise I won't put you to sleep. I hope. Um, but I won't know. I won't know unless your camera's on. If your camera's on and you're sleeping, I'll know I'll put you to sleep. But if your camera's not on, I have no idea. You could be feeding the dog. You could be out taking a walk. I won't know. Okay. So it'd be great if you could, you know, stay till the end. Um, Grant. Now, to give you a little bit of data about this webinar and who, I'm, who I am, my name is Vincent Kelly. I have been, um, I'm Irish. I uh, grew up in the countryside. I grew up, uh, one of my first jobs was working on farms because I, I, I come from a farming area. I'm not a farmer myself and my family weren't. My family were actually builders, um, but uh, I, I grew up working on farms, okay? Picking potatoes, sowing potatoes. And then I got kind of bored of the country lifestyle. So I moved to Dublin, uh, went to college, studied personnel management as part of a business studies degree course in university in Dublin. And then in the 90s, I went traveling 
uh, because I just went traveling. That's what you do when you're a student. You go traveling in the summer. And so I went to Germany. And in Germany, I was invited in off the street to do a free personality test. Okay. And I was interested in that kind of stuff. And I thought, you know, there might be something in this. Maybe I can find out why I'm so shy because you might not think it, but you know, I was a very shy guy. I'm actually, I would still consider myself introverted I, I, well an introverted extrovert I, I used to be called that, an introverted extrovert um but I, I'm, I'm i'm generally relatively quiet generally okay but i like to say what i want to say when i want to say it to the people that i want to say it to and that's you so thank you for being here um so anyway germany in germany did this personality test did a few courses on this subject that i'm going to introduce to you tonight and it really changed my life in terms of helped me to sort out where I was going, my goal in life, my communication skill, and lots, lots more. And since I did that, I, I found something that I was really good at, profession, um, and that I love. Um, found a beautiful wife, two beautiful kids, and just generally, everything's going well. Look, everybody hits their ups and downs, and I do too, but generally, everything's going well and healthy, um, just, just happy with the way things are going. And I want to, to give you what I've learned. That's, that's my purpose here tonight, to help you out, to, to learn a few basics, okay? Now, my webinar is based on this book here by this gentleman called L. Ron Hubbard, and it's called A New Slant on Life. A New Slant is basically a way of looking at life. And I'll tell you a little bit more about this at the very end. Okay. So now, let's begin, right? The very first thing, uh, David from Athlone. Hiya, David. Yes, I, I've been in Athlone. I know people from Athlone. Okay, now, this is from page 60 of this book, okay? I want to read this out to you. Why is it important to have a goal? Okay. People talk about goals all the time, but why is it so important? Why is there so many people giving webinars and lectures? Oh, sort out your goal, put your goals there, write your plan the, the previous day, keep your goals in mind. It, it's not for nothing. Okay. Here, listen to this. Happiness, then, could be defined as the overcoming of obstacles toward a desirable goal. Okay, so there's you in life, okay, and you have a goal here. Okay, that's your goal, whatever it is. Lose weight, find a perfect guy, find a perfect girl, get married, open a business, make a million euro, help your community, uh, I don't know, open, uh, I don't know, whatever, some community center, whatever. You have a goal. So happiness is the overcoming of the obstacles toward the goal, okay? So obstacles, with any goal, you are going to have barriers. Every goal is going to have a barrier. And it's not really, a, people find it like it's not really a desirable goal unless there are barriers. So for example, if, um, if I have a goal of winning a football match against a five-year-old, all right? I mean, like, Okay, fine. Uh, there might be some small barriers, but it's not going to take much. It's not going to take much unless that five year old is a super duper player. Whereas if I said, you know what, I'm going to win a football match against some guy that I grew up with who knows how to play football, then that would be a barrier that I would have to overcome. So happiness is the overcoming of obstacles toward a known goal. So if you don't have obstacles, you're not going to have the happiness because there has to be something to get over. There has to be something to, um, to succeed against. And there has to be a goal. Now, in terms of this thing here about learning how to get over the obstacles, this is part of the special offer thing that I have for you at the end, which you'll have to wait around to find out about. Okay? So... I'm not going to get into this too much right now, but the very basic of happiness is going to happen when you have a goal. It's important that the goal is there, whether it's a short-term one, a long-term one, whatever. 
okay? So that's the importance of having a goal. Now, I want to start off by asking you a question. What is your goal? I know this webinar is learn how to find your goal, okay? I know it is, but I want you to think of a goal that you have, and I don't care what it is, uh, whether it's to lose weight or get fit or to, you know, go to Greece this summer or to um, boom your business. So this is your first practical exercise of the night. I want you to think of a goal that you have, anything. I don't care what it is. Clean the car, uh, travel to space, uh, I don't know, fly a plane. What is a goal that you have? And pop it into the chat, would you? That would be great. Now you don't have to, but if you could, it'd be wonderful. And I'm gonna check them. And if I check and your name is missing, don't worry. I'm not expecting everybody to, to put in an answer, but if a few people could, it would be great because it gives me the feedback. So I want you to put in a goal that you have, small or big, and I don't care. It's just, goal is to have my dinner tonight. Okay, okay, let's see. Uh, Joanne, go visit your son for his birthday. Wonderful, very basic, simple goal, fantastic. Beth, move to Dublin by next year. Great, love it, Beth, love it. Orla, start your own business. Fantastic, love that, love that. Um, Giselle, set up a retreat business. Fantastic, people need to visit uh, places for a retreat. They need breaks from the stresses and so forth. Wonderful idea, Giselle. David, to have my own house. Beautiful, wonderful, thank you, David. And uh, Kira, to get fit. Fantastic, wonderful goals, okay? Now with all these goals, you're going to have barriers. If you hit those barriers and you're not getting over them or you're getting stuck or you give up, that happiness meter is gonna go down big time, okay? So thank you for that, folks. Absolutely brilliant. Let me just make a quick note of what the general gist is so I can see. Uh, son, wait, business. I just wanna kind of twist, kind of not twist, but adjust the webinar around what you've mentioned. Um, house, okay, wait, just so I have an idea. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, folks, for that. Now, let's have a look at something here. There are three conditions to do with goals, okay? And a goal is something the person wanted to, to be, okay? So I'm gonna write this as the definition of a goal, okay? Goal is something the person wanted to be, okay? And that could be I don't know, to be a businessman, or you want to be a father, or a policeman, or you want to be happy, or you want to be successful, uh, you know, you want to be some identity, like um, a lecturer, or um, I don't know, whatever, social worker, anything, you know, doctor, nurse, you know, something the person wanted to be, to do something the person wanted to do, so that could be anything, that could be, uh, I wrote down some examples, to climb Mount Everest, to get married, to run a successful business, to run in a marathon, to clean houses, to put out bins, to play football. Something the person wanted to do, or something the person wanted to have, okay? Now that could be a house, a car, uh, you know, whatever else. It could be, uh, put down here, kids, Plenty of money, stability, um, close friends, happy family, a guitar, a house, happy community, or a world with peace. I like that goal. A world where there's actual peace. I like that word, peace. People can thrive no matter their differences, where there's actually peace going on here. So, something the person wanted to be, to do, or to have. Uh, diddly diddly diddly. Whether the person abandoned it, failed in it, or not. Okay? So this is what the person wants to be, do, and have. Now, so as an example here, right? So we have this fella, okay? And this fella's being is he's a painter. Okay? So he's a painter, 
He's been to college. He is now a painter and he has his paintbrushes and he has the whole lot, okay? Now there's the do, and the do is basically painting, okay? He, he got his paintbrushes and he's, I don't know, drawn a picture of a tree. So this is the doing, the being, and then we have the doing. And then, so tell me at the end of it, what is the have? Can you tell me in the chat, what is the have? His be is painter, his do is painting, what's his have? Anybody want to throw in a guess? What's the have? His goal is to be, to do, or to have. 100%, a finished picture. Exactly, Joanne. That's what he wants to have. So, he's being a painter. Together with that, there's a doingness involved, and then there's a havingness. There's something that you have at the end. Okay? Now, when it comes to setting goals, there's a lovely little line I came, I came across from one of this man's work. In most people, all three conditions are sufficiently confused that they are best understood in reverse order. When one has clarified the idea of havingness, or what a person, what you want to have, like a house, or a big business, or happy kids, or um, a stable relationship, when one has clarified the idea of havingness, one can then proceed to clarify doingness or general activity. And when this is done, one understands beingness or identity. Now, the reason I bring this up is this. When you're in school and you're trying to decide what direction you're going to be going in your life, okay? What is the most popular question that you get asked when you're a young person or a teenager about your future? What's the biggest question that friends or family members, parents and teachers ask you about your future? Good, good. good. Thank you, Giselle. Financial income, that is also have on this, by the way, yeah. But let me just add to this. The product would be the painting and then you would exchange that for money. So yeah, the money would be part of it because you are correct, it has to be exchangeable. And when it's exchangeable, you get money in return, so it creates the, but his product is the painting. And if it's good enough, he'll get exchange for it, okay? Now, uh, good. Joanne, what do you want to be when you grow up? Hendrix, what do you want to be when you grow up? Selma, what do you want to be? Kira, what do you want to be when you grow up? Selma, what do you want to become? What job do you want? Exactly, well, exactly. This is exactly the question. People get asked what you want to be. Now, I was in my final year in school, right? Uh, I think I was 16. I actually finished school early because I was amazing. Uh, I don't know. I just started young. Um, and I was constantly asked this question by the guidance counselor. Vincent, what do you want to be? And, you know, for a teenager to hear that, it's so confusing. What do I want to be? Who am I? You know, it can be very, very confusing for a young person to hear this, or even for an adult. Come on, just decide, what do you really want to be in your life? It can be very confusing. So a good way to start off with a person is to find out in reverse order, what do you want to have? So if you as a teenager were asked, if I was asked, Vincent, what do you want to have? What do you want to have? You know what my answer would be? My answer would have been, I want to have happy people. I want to see my family happy. I want to see my parents happy and doing well. That's what I want to have. Okay? Then I would work out, okay, to have happy people, what would you have to do? Well, I'd have to maybe uh, learn how to coach them. Or maybe I'd have to do some counselling with them. Or maybe I'd have to just work out how to help them to plan their lives. Good. So that's the doing this. So good. So now, what do you need to be? So then I would have easily been able to work out where I need to get trained. And what I would have gotten trained on, which I did since, was to become a counsellor, which is who I am and what I am. I'm a counsellor and I also do, actually I do this life coaching 
kind of as an extension of my counseling and my knowledge of helping people, basically. So if as a teenager I had been asked what I wanted to have first, then I could have worked it, I could have broken it back, and then I could have worked out what career choice to take, which college to go to. Instead, what I did was I chose this very general business studies course, personnel management. It was kind of slightly close to what I wanted, but it wasn't quite, it wasn't quite there, you know. And I've seen so many people go into colleges and, and take, you know, professions that they really didn't want because they were influenced by others. Okay, so we'll do a little exercise here. Uh, okay, so let's say... So we're gonna, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you working so that you can see how to put a goal here. And you can also use this to help somebody else. If you have a friend or a family member who has no idea what their goal should be in life, you can use this to actually help them. You ask them what they'd like to have. Then on that basis, you break it down. What do you need to do to get that have? And then to get to do what you need to be to be able to do, okay? All right, so now let's have a look. Let's take an example. So let's take an example one person gave on the webinar. Let's say a person decide they want to have their own created house. Okay, that's what they want to have. They want to have their own created house in their own uh, create, you know, the, the countryside of their choice the design of their choice. They want to have this dream house that they painted when they were a kid. Okay, that's what they want to have. Okay, what would they have to do to get that have? What would be some examples of the doingness to bring about that end result? Pop your, pop your suggestions in the chat. What would be the things that a person would need to do in order to have that, his or her own created house. What would he have to do? Now you can just keep popping your examples in here. Any ideas you have? Anything at all, okay? Okay, they're all coming in here. Very good, okay. So we'll pop them in as they're flying in here. Flying in, absolutely. The answers are flying in the door. Flying in, keep them coming. Um, Hendrix, make money, okay? Right, make money, good, that's fine. We would definitely have to do that. Uh, what else do we have? Research, learn about construction, beautiful. Research, research. Uh, research reconstruction, okay, that's yes, good. Obviously, that's perfect. Learn about construction, prices, materials. Uh, find good builders, yes, I love it. Who said that? Clara, beautiful. Get builders. Get trustworthy builders, okay? Okay, and then learn construction, yeah? So you'd have to maybe, you would have to put up walls, okay? I'm gonna add to your thing, put up walls, okay? Electrical, plumbing, that is all gonna have to happen, whether you do it yourself or you get somebody else to do it, that's gonna have to happen. What else have we got here? Uh, good, uh, Selma, get the knowledge about lights, windows, yeah, so we're going to have to put in some lights, we're going to have to choose the correct windows, done coming in, don't know what done means, uh, Selma, save sufficient money, David, yeah, you're going to have to work out how to get money, get advice about the structure of the house, okay, so then there's going to have to be uh, planning, you're going to have to get planning permission, all these types of things, brilliant examples, okay, perfect. Now, in order for you to be able to do all these things, what is the B going to be? In other words, what is, let's call it a profession. What is the, now this can be a temporary profession or it can be um, a more long-term profession. What is or could be an example of an area that the person needs to get trained in? What does the person need to get trained in? That will determine what his being is. You see, because 
when a person works out their beingness, okay, the beingness could be whatever. Let's see if we got an example here. Entrepreneur. Clara says entrepreneur, okay? Very good. Okay. Okay, you want to, you decide, you know what? I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Good. In order to be an entrepreneur, you're going to have to learn something about entrepreneuring. All right? Before you start going and doing it. It's all very well calling yourself a pilot. You know what? I'm a pilot. Hooray! You can't just say, I'm a pilot. Well, I don't think you can anyway. Maybe you can. I'm a pilot and then hop in a plane. Yeah. Together with the beingness has to be learning. There has to be training. So the beingness includes training. So this is going to determine what you need to get trained in. Okay? Let me see what other examples. Any other? Uh, 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 a blueprint reader. Yeah, great. Reading blueprints. Okay? A blueprint reader. Yeah, so you... Look at the, the basic plans and you know exactly how to work it out. Anybody else? What other profession? And I'm talking about either temporary or it could be a part-time profession that a person needs. What other profession would fit this? What would be the profession? Gazelle, study and training. Correct. But that study and training has to be around. You have to know what you're studying and training about. Okay? Carmel, architect. Exactly. Perfect. That would be a perfect role to get into. An architect, working out how to design. That would be the, the, a wonderful thing that would fit nicely in here. And what about, let's not even get go that far. What about even just, he wants to be a builder. Okay? Carpenter. Uh, electrician. Um, it could be any of these things where he has a knowledge of a certain amount of these areas and he can learn how to hire other people to get them done in those areas. Quantity surveying. Giselle, um, quantity surveying, right? I kind of half know what that means. It's about uh, surveying land to see what type of buildings would be suitable for that land. And please, Giselle, you can correct me if I'm wrong. If you, if you wouldn't mind popping in what exactly that means, that would be great, because I don't want to give people the wrong definition. But we'll put in surveying. Okay? So, straight away, you can see, just by working out what it is that you want to have, you can work out doing this, and you can work out where you need to get trained, where you need to invest your time. I'll give you one more example. Let's say you wanted to have a happy community, a stable, safe community, all right? Let's say you live in, I don't know, I'm from um, uh, Turlstown, Blanchardstown, that's where, I, well, actually, I'm originally from Kildare, but I, I've moved to Blanchardstown, Turlstown in Dublin. Let's say if I wanted to have that beautiful area of, you know, a strong, stable community. Well, the doing this would be community work, uh, working with local politicians, working with the local county council, uh, working with maybe the police to make things safe, you know, getting all those things done. And then the beingness would be, I don't know, a social worker, or it would be um, uh, whatever. It could be even, I don't know, uh, a community police officer. You know, the beingness would be suitable for that doingness and for that havingness. Okay, a breakdown the quantity surveying, a breakdown of the cost involved in building that house. Oh, beautiful. So I was completely wrong. Thank you, Giselle. I'm glad you gave us the correct definition. Wonderful. It's nice to be wrong sometimes. And um, person who lives in the house to visualize how you'd like to have everything in the right place. Fantastic, Selma. Uh, yes. Yeah. You'd have to kind of, yeah, you would visualize, okay, what is it I want to have? What's the doing this? And then what would be the beingness would be a person who lives in the house. Yeah, okay, fine. So you can actually already create the beingness. But with every beingness comes training. So the training comes at this step here, and then there's your doingness, and then there's your havingness. Because as I said, you, you can't just say, hey, I'm a pilot. Or maybe you could. Okay, you could actually probably put in the training in here as well. But in my opinion, the, uh, the, the beingness contains the training. Okay? Now, next thing. Uh, so thanks very much, folks, for those examples. Much appreciated.
Now, let's have a little look at what type of goals you should be setting for yourself, okay? And this is some general information, and from this basis, you can decide what you're doing, okay? Now, there's a line from this book here. Um, that's the book again, because I'm going to plug this at the very end. I'm going to recommend you all get a copy of it. It's a new slant on life. Um, page 237. Years ago, I discovered and proved that man is basically good, and woman, of course. Man is a general term for man and woman. This means that the basic personality and the basic intentions of the individual toward himself and others are good. Okay, now, you may not, oh, hang on, uh, I need to draw the spell out somewhere back here because I've got more expansion to do. Okay, a person's intentions and his goals in life can be destructive. Okay. And it is, there is no doubt that there are people who have goals to destroy other people's lives and things. And uh, evidence by that is like people who participate in, you know, acts that destroy people's livingness and their, their communities, like war would be an example. Okay. So there are people who have a goal to destroy and which is basically evil. Okay. They want to destroy things. But what we're saying here is that the basic personality and the basic intentions of the individual toward himself and others are good. So when you're talking about putting a goal there, what we're talking about is a constructive goal. Okay? If you have inside of you destructive goals where you want to destroy people and you want to destroy yourself, that's not really you. That's not really who you are. People I found are more successful and happier when they're going along constructive goals. Now, this is from page 83 of the book. Every person has got eight, eight main areas of goals. Eight. Now, I only have time to go over four of them, but there are four meaty ones, and these are things that you have to take into consideration when you are setting goals for yourself. It's vital to keep these in, okay? Now, everybody has an urge to actually achieve a constructive goal in life, okay? Now, in this subject, there's a name that we give it, and it's called a dynamic, okay? A dynamic, or basically an urge, an urge to achieve something, an urge to get somewhere, okay? Now, there are four areas. The first area is self, okay? So a person has a goal to achieve something for themselves. I'll give you the exact defini definition. The first dynamic is the urge towards existence as oneself. Here we have individuality expressed fully. So you might have a goal for yourself. You want to get fit. That's number one. Okay? It's a valid goal for yourself. You want to be happy. You want to be a pilot. Um, you want to have a beautiful car. You want a million euros in your bank account. These are valid goals. Why not? Why not have a hundred million euro in your bank account or pounds or whatever it is? Why not? You do have goals for yourself. Okay? Now, can anybody give me an example of a goal that you could have for yourself? Just for you. Not for anybody else. Just you. Only you. Okay? Only you. And goal, for example, that I have, a personal goal of mine is to have continuous good health. That is a personal goal of mine. I want to have continuous good health. I don't like the whole pain thing. I don't like sickness, all that type of stuff. I don't like those things. Personal goal of mine is continuous good health. So can anybody give me an example of a personal goal that you might have in your life? 
and then we're going to move on to number two. And if you do, uh, peaceful life, that's what you want to have yourself. Perfect. Be financially stable, Hendrix. Fantastic. Okay. Now, let's expand this. Okay. Now we're going to go on to the second part of this. And this is uh, sex and family. Okay. And here we have the relationship area. Okay. Husband, wife, whatever, and kids. Okay? People have an urge or a goal to create stability for family. They have goals to find the right partner, to keep the relationship going, to get married, to have kids, to raise the kids to make successful children into successful adults. These are goals on the second dynamic, which is sex and family. Uh, let's see, Sylvia on the first, a job that you enjoy, exactly, that's the first dynamic. Giselle, financial freedom, exactly. And Selma, representative, looking well-dressed, perfect. You might want to look well, that's a very valid goal. But your second area of goal is the relationship area. It's something that you shouldn't ignore. So you might have a goal, you know what, Vinny, I just want to be financially stable. Perfect. Good. So that's for number one here. But this is an area you'll have to look at as well because it's part of you. It is part of you. There is a natural desire to have a goal in that area. And if you've had failures in that area, they need to be repaired because you have to put some goals in here. Okay, now let's move on. Let's expand here a little bit. And we'll put the third group here, which is groups. Okay. Now, every individual wants to be part of a group. Okay. Or you want your group to survive. So it's all very well to state that your goal is to live on your own in the countryside with nobody around you except cats and rabbits. Okay, that's fine. But that's first dynamic. Groups are part of your life. So you do have to have a look at that area and get involved in groups and put a goal there for your group, either to be a member of a group, to be an active participant in a group, or to create your own group. Now that could be a business, it could be a community group, um, I don't know, it could be a chess club, it could be just a group of people who go out cleaning the litter on a Saturday morning. You have to have some sort of a goal there in relation to a group. And it doesn't matter how far that goes out. Maybe your group is, um, I don't know, uh, uh, your political party, or it could be your church, or it could be uh, your local community center, or your uh, uh, residence association. These are all groups. And you should put goals there for your group. Keep that in mind. List these down and make sure that you put goals here, okay? So now next one, we're gonna expand. And this is something that people don't often take into consideration. And that last group is mankind, okay? Now, what that basically means is that everybody has a natural goal to do something for other human beings. In other words, when you watch the news, it can be very stressful to see, for example, what's happening over in Turkey, and you feel for them. But why do you feel for those people who have been, uh, you know, hurt by the, or sorry, and died because of the uh, earthquake in Turkey, for example, or because of the war in Ukraine? Why does it affect you so much? Why do you feel about that? Because it's part of you. These things are part of you. And you do have to have a look at that area and put a goal there that you want to do something. Now, maybe that involves doing a little bit for charity in your own area. Or maybe it involves 
um, becoming part of a group that does something for people in need or to help individuals, okay? Because all of these categories involve one major word, and that is to help, okay? You have a goal, a natural goal inside you to help other people, not just yourself. So doing things for yourself is completely fine. But these areas as well cannot be neglected because they are part of you. And when you neglect them, you will feel it. So if you're not doing anything for mankind, you don't care about your group, you don't really care about your family, brothers and sisters, you're just operating for number one, it's going to get you so far. And there's nothing wrong with becoming successful in that area. And you know, in fact, some people only care about the group, but they don't care about themselves. And that's not good either. Okay? Now, what I'd like you to do is this. I'm going to take this last big section here of mankind. Can anybody put down an example? Okay? Of a goal that you could put down or that you could have in that area of mankind. And I'm going to, I'm going to, st I'm stretching your limits here now. I'm stretching you out. And by the way, there's another four of which I didn't go over. I don't want to overwhelm you. Just this one here. So put down in the chat an example of one thing you might like to achieve in the area of helping mankind. And this is not philosophical, by the way. This is a natural part of your life. When you start to put goals in these areas and you start to become active and you start getting things done, you're going to start feeling better and bigger and stronger and happier. Why? Because these are all part of you. These goals are part of you. So, uh, thank you, Kira, in a second. So what I'm looking for is an example of what kind of a goal could you put down in that area of mankind. And if you can't think about that, let's go back to the group of ideally this one here. Okay. Clara, spreading goodwill. What a beautiful goal. Spreading goodwill to make people happy. Why not? You know, in Ireland over the years when I was growing up, we always contributed yearly. We went on a fast. And uh, although we broke the fast very regularly uh, as, as kids, uh, called Trokera, which is an Irish um, Catholic um, uh, charity group to help people in Africa and we all contributed to, to it and it meant a lot to us and it was a big community activity so these things are important um, Selma, get people more knowledge about life so that they can handle it better fantastic you can work on one person at a time and you're doing something for mankind beautiful Selma Giselle, to become a retreat leader to help others beautiful, look I am you know who I'm talking to? I am talking to people on this webinar, beautiful people. It's funny. Each one of you are talking about something to help other people. Now, I've pushed you a little bit, but it's there anyway because it comes out so quick. You're all interested in helping other people, and I love you for that. To become a retreat leader to help others, brilliant Giselle, to bring people upwards, Hendrix, Help a homeless person get back on their feet with a job and home. Fantastic. And there's loads of examples you can see about that around Hendrix. Beautiful. Nobody likes to see people sleeping on the street uh, or starving or in pain or agony. We want to do something naturally for those people. Thank you, Hendrix. Joanne, contribute money to an organization that helps people addicted to drugs. Fantastic. Yeah, worldwide Drugs are a massive, massive issue. Maybe you can't go out yourself and do something, but you can contribute something towards it. Great, 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 Joanne. David, sharing resources that they do not have. Fantastic, and that could be sharing knowledge, it could be sharing skills, or it could be sharing things. It could be sharing money, it could be sharing whatever. Brilliant, David, thank you. You're welcome, Clara. Mbole, hello. Hello, I see you now and again, good. Help people with mental health issues. Fantastic. Look, we all want to see people going upwards and more healthy in life. We don't want to be recommending destructive things. And now that you've mentioned that, Mbola, you've just touched off a little button here. Oh, 
And it just, I always want somebody to put that down because it really gives me inspiration to give a certain activity, a little bit of a slap. I'm majorly against drugging people for stress. Sorry, majorly against it. Now, of course, if somebody is suicidal or there's no other hope or this is the very last resource, okay, maybe a drug might help, but there's way too many people going to their local professional and saying, look, doctor or whatever it is, I'm stressed to bits. Oh, no problem. Here you go. Take that four times a day and you'll be grand. And that doesn't work. There's always an institution. I just don't like that whole category of drugging, electric shock, uh, labeling people with all these stupid disorders of caffeine drinking disorder and I haven't a clue where I'm going disorder and I can't stop closing the door disorder. So many disorders out there that uh, it frustrates me. Okay, rant over. All right, I promise, rant over. But but it's not my fault. You gave me the you gave me the the the. the the inspiration. Okay. Okay. Very good. Um, Sylvia, helping colleagues at work by sharing knowledge. Fantastic. And look, that's also helping the third dynamic, but it's also helping people on a broad level because people will spread that around. Uh, Selma, getting kids informed about learning how to learn truth about drugs so they get tools. Fantastic. What a great to build the future generation. Okay. You're all brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. So you do have to incorporate all these areas. When you're placing goals there, if you do and you start working on them, you're going to feel great. If you ignore them, you will feel it. You'll start feeling it. You won't quite know what's wrong, what's missing, what's missing, what's missing. These are the things that are missing. What's missing? There's something missing for me. I don't know what it is. These are the things that are missing in general. Okay. And the last little point I want to get over before we conclude this webinar is this. And this is one of the lines from uh, Mr. Hubbard's work as well. And it's a beautiful line, which is the following. <clears throat> Be true to your own goals. Okay? So when you have a goal in life and it's yours, you're going to get people who are going to try and distract you and pull you away from that goal. It's going to happen. Life. Be true to your goals. If you want to learn how to play the guitar, okay, I was going to try and draw one, I won't, because it'll turn out terrible. Follow through on the goal. If it's something that you personally want to achieve. This says be true to your own goals. Your goals. What are your goals? Not your mammy or your daddy, or your Uncle Bob, or your Aunt Gertrude, your goals. Be true to your own goals. That means keep them in mind, follow through, and work on them, and get them. And then once you've achieved your goal, set a new one. Because you don't want to be in limbo. Set yourself a new goal, okay? Now, folks, so what I gave you tonight is just a taster of some of the basics that you need to keep in mind when you are trying to find your goal. Because whatever your goal is, it's going to be personal to you and it's going to be in those four major areas that I went over tonight. But in order to really get a full picture of this, I am going to recommend that you get this book. A New Stamp on Life, all right? It is absolutely fantastic and it expands on everything that I went over and contains a lot more. So I'm gonna throw up a little slide here for you. Um, by the way, this is the um, hardback. The one I'm gonna to promote to you is the paperback, okay? Um, so what do we, let me just see if I can read what's on that screen there. One second, speaker, now. Okay, uh, so we have the eight main uh, goal areas that you need to work on. Actually, can you guys read that? Because my, oh yeah, there we go. My picture's off. The eight main goal areas for each individual to work on. So I went over four. There are four more areas that you need to take into consideration when you're setting goals for yourself, okay? I just gave you four. There's eight. Uh, in terms of relationships, how to get your relationship to the next level, 
Most of us have a goal in relationship. If you're in a relationship, you want to have a better one. You want to improve it. You want to make it more stable. If you're not in a relationship, you might want to learn how to get into one. So we've got some really key basics in the book, which will teach you how to do that. How to get in control of your work, your business, your life. There's so many lovely little segments there about how to control things better, how to uh, follow the steps in order to decide what's the best thing to do first, second and third. And then finally, how to decide what is right for you. Okay, so that's really important. Um, you are important. Did you know that? You're important. What you want is important. Your dreams are important. So in the book, it kind of reminds you of that and gives you a whole lot of different tools. Let me just see how many. There's so many chapters in this book. Uh, I can't even. There's so many. Four and two is six and three is nine. Twelve, 14, 16, 19, 21, 22. There's 23 chapters in this book. Um, loads and loads of great stuff. How to handle kids. Um, how to determine who's bringing you down in your life and who's pulling you up. Um, just great, great stuff. How to work out the best decision in life. Um, wonderful, wonderful stuff. And really, really easy to read. Okay. Now, I told you at the beginning that for anybody who stayed until the end, okay, uh, I have a special little offer for you. And that is that if you get the book tonight, and there'll be a link going up afterwards, right? If you get the book tonight... I'm going to give you this free book that goes with it. It's called Targets and Goals. Okay, now this booklet is very easy to read. It's basically a breakdown of the steps that you take in order to make planning an actuality. Because we can all have wonderful dreams of, you know what, I'd love a beautiful mansion on the coast and up on the hills, or I'd like the perfect partner, or I'd like um, a happy environment. But if you don't work out the exact steps to do first and second and third and fourth, you, you won't get there. So this book that focuses on, uh, it's got a scale um, which shows you how to make planning an actuality. It's got loads of little pictures, okay, on how to do it. Um, how to draw up a plan, exactly the steps on how to uh, put a plan together. Um, Long-term planning short-term planning and then there's a whole load of exercises that you can get you can do at the back of the book here now you can do these yourself or there's a free online course that goes with the book uh, which you can do online and somebody can actually assist you getting through the book so if you get the book tonight um, that booklet is going to be sent out to you free okay and there'll be free shipping as well so the the self the new stand on life is 17 euros and the book will be free if you get it tonight, okay? Now, so that's that. Okay, so uh, we can take that screen off there now. And uh, what I want to tell you is about is the consultation, right? So not everybody has got the same size shoe. So what I've, put to, what I've done is I have put together a team of consultants to help every individual on the webinar with their own personal situation it's a free consultation it's 30 minutes and it will help you to be able to straighten out where do i start and what do i do first and it's also good to have somebody to bounce off in relation to these things so as i mentioned everybody's not the same we've all got our own personal unique situation so i put together a free consultation for everybody uh, um, so that you can iron out what you want to fix in your life and we can work out what to do first, okay? So now, what I've also done is I've put together a poll which I want you to take two minutes to fill out now. We're about to wrap up. So I am gonna put up a poll now on the screen, on your phone or on your computer. It's gonna come up right now. If you could take just two minutes to fill that out, I'm gonna stop talking. Take a few minutes to fill that out and I will come back like in a minute and then we'll wrap up. And I'll give you all a pat on the back. And I think I have got the poll to do as well. So it's there on your screen. You just, I think there's just like, there's literally just two questions.
uh, we'll give it like one more minute <clears throat> or maybe 30 more seconds. Just to get an idea, I'm looking for a kind of feedback. The purpose of the poll is just to get an idea about if, if what you would like to do as a follow-up, if anything, basically. There's no obligation, just if anything, what would you like to do next? My recommendation is always get the book. You know, you can get the consultation, just do one or the other, you can do both. Um, but the whole point of it is to help you to be able to get this material that I've touched on tonight and help you to make up your own mind about it. Okay, so I'll just give you a minute to finish that off and then we'll wrap up. I've got one or two final things to say. They're important. So don't go, don't leave me. That's great, Giselle. Delighted, delighted. Start as soon as you can. Start as soon as you can. Okay, good folks, so we're done on the poll. Thank you so much for everybody who filled in the poll. Folks, um, for anybody who chose on the book, on the, on the poll, to get the book or the consultation or both, um, and what I want you to do is stay on the chat. Sylvia is going to send you the link Okay, even when this webinar is finished, the chat is going to stay open. Sylvie is going to send you the link where you can either get the book or you can actually sign up for the consultation or you can do both. Okay, so she's going to do that. So when I'm wrapped up, you'll see my face disappearing from the screen in a few minutes. In a minute, uh, the chat will stay open for that purpose. Folks, I want to end now by summing up what we went over tonight. Okay, so we went over what is the goal, something you want to be, to do or to have. Okay, actually before that we talk about it's very important to have goals and get over the obstacles to maintain your happiness. Uh, number two was you have to uh, work out what you want to be, do and have, and often you do it in reverse. You work out what you want to have first, then you work out what you need to do, and then be. All right, uh, <clears throat> so we did that. What do we do next? The goal needs to be constructive and it needs to incorporate those four areas of yourself, family and relationships, groups and mankind, okay? Those groups are part of your life and your area. And then finally, be true to your own goals. I hope what I went over with you tonight helped you. If you have any questions, when we've wrapped up, I'm gonna say goodbye in a second, you can stay on and send any questions into Sylvia. She'll be able to help you with any questions you have and uh, she can then consult with me if you just know the answer or whatever. And uh, you can actually send in the message there to her. Uh, I want to say thank you to everybody who's joined us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Even though I didn't see you directly here in front of me, if you're out there, thank you so much for being here and giving me your time. And for everybody on Zoom, genuinely appreciate you giving me your time tonight. Uh, you didn't have to. You could have been walking the dog or watching television. Maybe you still are watching television with one eye. Uh, I appreciate your time. So thank you very much, David, and for having your camera on. And Giselle, you too, for having, having your camera on. Thank you so much. Uh, Selma, Joanne, Beth, Satmari, Carmel, Maria Rapansky, Sylvia, Clara, Kulvinder, Mambule. Hello, Mambule. And Orla. Thank you so much, folks, for being here. Um, the chat is going to stay open. I will say good night to you. Have a beautiful rest of your evening and I hope to see you here again sometime at another webinar and having read those books. And remember, knowledge is the key to stability and certainty and uh, do well with it. Okay, folks? Bye.